First of all, I believe in ahimsa, non-violence, in thoughts, words, action. And uh, this is definitely connected to spiritual well-being. Because when we have violence within, we, are, we can't meditate, we cannot be balanced. Violence is an expression of imbalance. So if we are looking at balance, there cannot be violence. I practice ahimsa and veganism or the practice of vegan lifestyle is a part of my conviction of ahimsa. My conviction based on ahimsa, non-violence. I always believe a vegan lifestyle is not a choice. It's a responsibility. A vegan lifestyle has to be a responsibility. We are responsible for the nature. We are responsible for our own life. We are responsible for all the beings of the world. We are responsible for the whole creation because we have a refined intellect and we can make a difference in the life pattern around us. So vegan lifestyle is always a responsibility. And we talk about rights where we believe we can take somebody's life for our satisfaction or our gratification. This is not true. Every being on earth have the same right on earth. They have the right to live. They have the right to experience earth within their capacities. All beings created have the same right. So I believe that um, Ahimsa is nothing unnatural in that context. It's not a choice. I believe Ahimsa, non-violence, is our responsibility. Being a choice means you can choose between this and this. A and B. It's not like that. We cannot choose to give death to any being as a choice. That's not a choice at all. So what is the right choice? What is the right refinement? What is the right expression of our ref refinement is non-violence. We cannot spill blood. We cannot spill blood of any being, including our own species. The first and foremost to walk the path of being a vegan is to be aware. We must be clear and we must know that we have the right for existence and every species have the right for existence. I believe that on earth at this point in time, each day, hundreds and thousands of beings are killed for the sake of their flesh. It's basically a body. For their dead body, we, have, we, have, we are killing many beings and so many beings are extinct. Be aware that the whole nature is connected to us. Every animal, plant, bird, every flora and fauna have something to do with us. This is the truth. And that is exactly how the Vedic astrology, every star, the 27 stars, which is connected to everybody on earth, 7.5 billion people are under some star. Each star has a tree, each star has an animal and a saint, a rishi, and each star has a bird. So we, each person born under that star are supposed to take care of that tree, that bird, that animal, and that connect to that saint, so that there will be harmony on earth. That means we are protecting every being on earth. All these 27 stars, the people born under each star, they will protect all these beings which are connected to them. So individually, the whole world will be protected. The whole ecology and the whole species will be protected. So when you respect something, you protect it. That is why in our philosophy, there are numerous gods and goddesses and each 
one of them are connected to a certain animal or a bird. So we tend to respect the bird, the vehicle of those deities. And that way, we, because we respect, we will not harm them. So this is a very good way of understanding the whole universe or the whole, at least the earth, earth plane and understand that this is all part of us and we must take care of them. And especially most of the mammals that we, or all the, all the mammals for that matter, they have great feeling just like us. They cannot speak, but they are just like us. They care for their families. They live together. They respect each other. There is love and companionship amongst them. But we fail to see all this. We do factory farming, separate the mother from the child as soon as the child is born. And, and the bonding of the nine months between the mother and the child is annihilated in a moment. And that gives tremendous pain to the mother as well as the child. These kind of insensitive activities definitely disturbs the vibratory level of earth. That's exactly why uh, great masters have continuously talked about non-violence as the primary duty of uh, human beings. No violence, no separation of people, animals, birds, just harmonize everything so that everybody can coexist on this earth peacefully. So this is one of the major spiritual question here. When you try to connect to yourself, imagine you are trying to meditate and there are lots of noises here. Will you be able to meditate? You need a quiet place, right? This vibration of the air are full of agonies and noises, cries. When you become more and more connected to you, you will start experiencing all those things. If you are not at all connected, you are living in the world of noises, noises of mind, which are thoughts, noises from outside, and we are completely connected to those noises. We may not feel it. We may not experience it. But the moment you decide to connect to yourself and start experiencing the inner joy, the silence within, that's the time when all these noises really matters. Then you cannot harm any being in thoughts, in words, or in action. It's impossible for you to harm any being. So this is very, very important to understand. We need to make our environment beautiful, healthy, and also uh, violence-free, so that all people are in meditative state. Because we are, we are peaceful. There's no regret, no guilt. Because violence breeds regrets, guilt, bad health, everything. And that's why I said, vegan is not a choice, it's a responsibility. We have to understand how the world works and integrate into it fully. Because human beings have created this world as they wanted or as they liked or evolved into whatever we have today, we forgot the sensitive aspects of existence or the tender aspects of existence. And the price that we pay is our health, disharmony, anger, hatred, jealousy, war, revenge, uh, bloodshed. All these things are connected to lack of understanding, lack of connection with ourselves. If we really connect ourselves, like look at our own family. How would you feel if our family is separated or disintegrated? The same they feel every bird and every animal feels but they can't speak so we do not hear them but if you really listen to them you you will understand all they need is love and leave them alone let them be just like we have to be left alone we don't like displacements we don't like wars we don't like separation you ask anybody in this world 7.5 billion people what they will say is that all we need is peace, all we need is love. And vegan is an expression of that love, that kindness, that compassion. Our well-being is connected to the well-being of the environment. We are not an individual, we are not an island. We are part of the mainland. Mainland is all the beings of the water, 
beings on the sky, beings on earth, they are all integrated and connected. Each one is supporting each other. And nature has a beautiful way of balancing life. That is why there are predators and prey. A predator eats much lesser than the prey. Usually we see hundreds of deers and fewer lions. When there is hunger, the lions attack one animal, kill that animal and share its flesh. So the whole entire deer population is not annihilated. So the predators are there to, to kind of equalize or stabilize the deer population or the, uh, the herbivorous population. So, uh, and most of the, the larger uh, beings on earth are herbivorous. They don't eat meat. Elephants for that matter. Elephants are much bigger animals. Like a blue whale is not a carnivorous animal. It doesn't hunt and eat people. Or look at our human beings. Our teeth are made not to consume meat. The canines and the, 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 the structure the, the a tiger or a lion has is different from human beings. So uh, we, we all have give, been given our system. And our stomach, our intestines are more coiled than a lion or a tiger. So if you look at the whole world, the world nature has its own way of unifying things, harmonizing things, managing things and stuff like that. It has its own pattern and this is pretty scientific, very, very good. But when human intervention happens, the whole pattern changes, everything changes. That's where the problem lies. And we hunt beings for pleasure, we manipulate them, we capture them, torture them, kill them. And that creates tremendous agony because we are the most unpredictable species on the whole earth. No beings trust us. We are separated from the entire nature. And what we did get from out of this, what did we get out of this? Agony, pain, diseases, ailment. This is what we got. So we need to understand that we are supposed to be part of nature, be nature, be with nature and love nature. And then, as I said in the beginning about Ahimsa, so what is the food ideal for human consumption? Because we have refined intellect, we know what is good for us, what is not good for us. We have dissected every food and understood the ingredients of each food. We know quite well what's healthy, what's not healthy, what's suitable, what's not suitable. So what we should eat as per the pattern or as per the, as per the rules of Ahimsa is that anything which dies when we eat should not eat them. Any plant, any, any material that is killed for our consumption should not eat it. Just like a mango tree provides mangoes. We can consume mangoes because it does not disturb the mango tree. And any fruits or vegetables or anything from earth which does not harm the mother plant is okay for human consumption. Likewise, sprouts. Sprouts are baby plants. We cannot consume them. They are baby plants. They are ready to wake up to become a plant. So, we can't consume them. What we can consume are the materials which will not harm the mother plant. That's good for us. And there is sufficient for us in that way, which will stabilize our metabolism, stabilize our energy patterns, align us properly and have a good healthy existence. This is true veganism. True veganism is totally being harmless. We cannot harm a being. We should not harm anybody, any being, whether it is plant, whether it is bird, whether it is animal, anybody, anybody or everybody should be allowed to exist, their full existence. We, ha we have no right to kill. We have no right to kill at all. So this is something which we have to really understand. As practicing vegans, we must be cautious. That does not mean that we cannot experience or enjoy our life. We can. We can make various permutations and combinations of various food that is available without harming any species. 
can be experienced and enjoyed. There are hundreds of possibilities, hundreds of varieties. Veganism is a statement. It's a statement that we care for Earth. We love Earth. We are committed to the well-being of Earth. We are responsible for the well-being of the ecology or and the species around us. As human beings, as beings with refined intellect, we have to ensure that we look after all the species around us, or at least we should not harm them. We cannot kill, we cannot manipulate, we cannot disturb or destroy any species. It's still not too late. We have already disturbed and destroyed so many species, such as Dodo, the, the beautiful bird called Dodo. There's not even one existing on Earth today. I'm just giving one example. There's plenty like that. Our voracious appetite has destroyed the species. And what did we gain? This is a body which can be used by some somebody. All the species are, every beings are somebody. They have a personality. They have uniqueness. There are nothing comparable. Because human beings cannot see the uniqueness, it doesn't mean that there is no uniqueness in all these beings. They are very unique. They are all unique beings. They, they have their needs and they have their space. They have their uh, right on earth, just like us. So it is in, indeed important to understand that all the beings of the nature have perfection as a personality. They all are perfect as personalities. They have personality. They have uniqueness. They are all unique. So we must respect them because they have their families. They have their communities. They have their clans. We must respect them and allow them to be natural. We have no right to separate a cow and a cow. It's agony for them. We have no right to conquer, capture and torture animals in labs. They do not see light at all. Most of them are killed in the labs. Thousands of beings are killed in labs because of experiments. We have no right. We have no right at all. I follow veganism because I cannot follow anything else. Because Ahimsa is my strongest conv conviction. Ahimsa, humanity. It's part of humanity. Humanity is my religion. Being human is my way of life. And wh why, what is, and what is being human? Being responsible, being responsible for every being, everything on earth and living a responsible life of love and care. We must have harmony. We love each other. All the world needs from human beings is love, compassion, kindness. There's nothing else you need to give to this world. We don't have anything more to contribute than care, love, compassion and kindness. And that's the vegan lifestyle, a lifestyle of responsibility or a responsible lifestyle. That's being vegan. And we, we, we have a great future. The whole world will be vegan one day, I'm sure. Because people will wake up to the idea that, hey, why am I killing all these beings? For what? Just for the pleasure of the parrot? For the dung? Or the food on the table has no taste. It has only some smell. The food that is consumed, once it's gone into the stomach, we don't know the taste. There's no taste because it's we don't experience it. So the, the food that touches the tongue gives the taste and before or after there's no taste. For that purpose, for that sake, how many dead bodies on earth? It's cruelty. It's violence. It's unnatural. It's not natural. So, it's our responsibility not to harm any being. Instead, nurture every being. We have to allow every being to exist peacefully. Then there will be no wars on earth. There will be no bloodshed. Bloodshed is not good. It is not good to spill blood as we are a refined species. Our expression should be that of kindness, compassion and love. Unconditional love. Nurture, care. And this, is, this will help. Food, food has to be understood properly. It's not about the what in, what's inside the food. Mostly we consume food because of, because of the taste. Only because of the taste. We do not think that we are being graveyards by consuming dead bodies. 
we are not graveyards. We are pure species. We are refined species. We are expressions of supreme consciousness because we have refined intellect. We cannot be graveyards. We have to be aware. We have to be clear about it and we have to live it. The intensity of the crime depends on the helplessness of the victim. So, when we say harmony, we should not have anybody helpless around us. Means, we are not enslaving any beings, we are not deciding the life of anybody. Everybody has a natural birth, natural existence and natural death. That's the right of every species on earth. And this is how the spiritual life always happened in Bharat. We always, we, we lived in that harmony. A cow and a calf were really family members or equal to family members in our traditions. They, we never harmed them. And when the cow cannot give milk anymore, it's still treated well. It's uh, not killed. No being is killed. So the culture of non-violence had deep, deep root in our tradition. It had very deep roots. So the culture of non-violence enhances you, aligns you, strengthens you, and also keeps you fully balanced. Total balance. That lifestyle, that attitude has to come back and, and be the right attitude or the right lifestyle in the world. And when we say, oh, I love the taste, always think beyond. I love the taste, but what's the cost? When an animal is killed, the pain and the, the, and the anxiety that it goes through contaminates its meat completely, just like us. So this has to be very, very clearly understood. And that is the bottom line here. You know, we, when we think about our tastes, we must also think about the cost. If the cost is lives of other beings, the price we pay is very high. The price will be our health. We are responsible for the death of everything if we kill them. Natural death is what is the right of every being. Like just like us. And why we have many hospitals, much more medicines and various new diseases every day is because of our greed factor. This is very important to understand. Our greed factor is literally destroying our species. Now with the COVID situation, hundreds of people died. And now we do not know in the next 10 years, this decade, 2020 to 2030, what sort of a thing we can expect? What sort of fate do we have? But we can decide on one thing. Number one, we will not make our bodies graveyards for any beings. Secondly, we will start to understand the subtle vibrations, the, the sensitive nature of life, where every species has their harmonious ways of existence, their families, their people, their clans. Because they can't speak, we cannot take them for granted. And because we have refined intellect, that intellect should be used to exercise compassion, kindness, unconditional love and protection. We should protect other species. In the nature, a predator hunts a prey, that's the nature's job. Nature will take care of it. Nature has devised to these beings to take care of the species, just to create the harmony on, on, the, on earth. Like that, we do not have to disturb the nature. We have no right to disturb the nature. And when we hunt a being thinking that we will control the nature, we do not even know the harmony. Human beings cannot understand how the tapestry works. And because we do not understand, a lot of species is lost. Because we have greed for more farms, we destroyed the forest, the rainforest, the, the forests of many countries, burned them because we wanted more space for our cattle. And, and it's all agony, agony, agony eventually. Disharmony eventually. Catastrophes, that's what's happening. Huge catastrophe. And, and look at the world now. We are all cordoned off 
kind of put in the quarantine by an invisible virus. We are kind of pushed aside and the nature has taken over. Nature will take over eventually if we continue to be insensitive. Hence, vegan is a lifestyle, vegan is a statement and vegan is our responsibility. It's not even a choice. I do not look at vegan as a choice. It's a lifestyle. It's a responsibility. The outward expression of Ahimsa is vegan. This is very important to understand. It's important to understand how our body works, how our life works, how the nature works, and then we decide our food habits as well. And as I said earlier, the right food is the one that does not harm or kill that species. It should not harm the mother plant or harm or disturb or kill that being. That is the right food. The right food, the harmonious food, that will bring the vibrations of earth back to normalcy and we will have a great life ahead. Thank you.